Hello and welcome to another Geomagic 20-minute spotlight webinar. Thank you for joining us. Today's topic will be focused on four types of surfacing in Geomagic Design X. We appreciate you for joining us today and hope that you will be able to join us on future spotlights as well. A few housekeeping items to mention before we get started. As many of you may have noticed, all your lines are muted upon joining the webinar, so please use the Q&A features to submit any questions you may have during today's session. In an effort to abide by the 20 minute time allotment in, during today's session, we will not address any of the questions during the presentation. However, we will follow up with you after the session. That brings me to another point. The session is being recorded and we will send out a link to this recording after the session has concluded. My name is Greg George and I will be your host today for the webinar. I'm an applications engineer and I have about 11 years experience with 3D systems. So today's topic is four types of surfacing in Geomagic Design X. And it's not that there are only four types of surfacing. These are just four different methods that we commonly use. And um, they're just four different methods of creating surface geometry inside of Design X. Um, so first of all, I like to always get on the same page as far as terminology and what we're talking about. So what are surfaces? Um, surfaces inside of Design X, a surface model is a thin shell that does not have any mass or volume. When we say surfaces in Design X, we're referring to NURB surfaces. NURB stands for Non-Uniform Rational Basis Spline, or B-Spline, and it's a mathematical model commonly used in the manufacturing world for generating and rep rep representing surfaces and curves. So a little bit more about NURBS. NURBS are just constructed of control vertices, hulls, lines, curves, and they're used to represent basic and complex shapes. And a solid is essentially uh, a bounded surface or a surface uh, shape with no holes. So a lot of CAD packages talk a lot about solids, um, and really all they are is just bounded uh, surface shapes. They're still built off of this NURBS technology that is the backbone of most of manufacturing. Um, so what are the four different types of surface extraction or creation inside of DesignX? These are the four different types here. One is feature-based modeling. So as you can see here on the left-hand side, I have two different extruded surfaces where you can take those surfaces and trim them together. So most CAD packages have this ability to extract feature-based uh, surfaces, but we're able to do that from scan data. So that's the big important difference between DesignX and almost every other software out there. So we can extract feature-based surfaces from scan data or create them from scratch on a blank screen. The second type is boundary fit surfacing. So a lot of CAD packages do have boundary fit surfaces, but ours are a little bit different in here because they allow you to snap those surfaces to the scan data or polygon as well. So you can draw the curves directly on the mesh and then fill those curves with surfaces. And this is kind of a manual extraction method. Most of the time it's used for very organic shapes. The third type is what we call exact surfacing inside of DesignX. It's very similar to boundary fit surfaces, but it just has extra layers of automation to the ability to extract those surfaces. So in the screenshot below, you see the red lines, the red paint on the surface. You can paint areas of high curvature and the software will automatically extract the curves from those areas and apply them to the geometry. And then it's a semi-automatic workflow where you can segment the data and divide up the scan data into different surfaces and have it automatically uh, fit those surfaces to the scan data itself. Um, so that brings me to the final uh, option, which is basically a variation of exact surfacing. 
Um, exact surfacing is the semi-automatic method of extracting surfaces from the scan data where there's a lot of user input laying out where those surfaces belong. The auto surface method is really just taking that entire scan and plugging, plugging it into the tool where the software will go ahead and make all the decisions uh, as to where to draw those patches. Now, a lot of times as the screenshot there shows, you will see that they're very random and the surfaces flow in all different directions of the curvature of data, but they're highly accurate. And for many people, they save an awful lot of time um, to reverse engineer objects. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump over into the demonstration portion where I'll just show a little bit of how to extract each one of these uh, types. Okay, for the first uh, type where you can create feature-based surfaces, um, the idea here is that I can just model surfaces and trim them together. Um, so, you know, one method for doing such uh, of an application is I can create surfaces and there's a bunch of different ways of extracting these. I'll go ahead and just drag this plane up and intersect this area here. Um, so I'm just going to drag that plane up right there and I'll use that plane and I'll create a mesh sketch and go into that mesh sketch. We've talked about some of these tools through some of our other webinars. Um, for today, I'm just going to do a real quick spline. I'm not even going to use the fitting. I'm just going to come in here and just, just manually draw a spline through that data. And then after I do that, you know, I can move this around. That's bothering me there. It's not lined. So now that I have that created, a feature-based surface can be created by just taking uh, a piece of geometry like this and saying surface extrude. And if I want to do a mid-plane, I just create a surface. And you'll see I have my surfaces turned off. So I'll turn that on. You see I just modeled one directly through that. So that's one way that you can uh, extract feature-based surfaces um, through there. Another one is you can use some more automatic tools that we have inside of the software. So if I wanted to just turn that one off and then use my regions here, I can select that region there and I'll come over to Extrusion Wizard and just tell the software create a surface from that data and this is create an extruded surface and then I hit next the software will automatically calculate that direction for me it's kind of a crazy direction and if I actually want to reassign that I can just toggle back and I could just say hey it has to follow this direction and then recalculate it and then have the software draw that again for me and again, I can use these to extract feature-based surfaces. So this is really nice, and it's great for parts where you can identify extrudes, revolves, lofts, sweeps, all those basic types of uh, data and utilize them for surface modeling. So in that one, it's kind of weird, but we'll go ahead and kill that So because we already showed how to create one of these. Um, so for the next thing, what, what we're going to do is uh, create that uh, flat surface down here on the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select that bottom surface. If that was a flat plane, we can fit surface primitive geometry where I say, hey, let's fit a plane to that area and fit a surface plane to it. But in this case, what I'm going to do is use another tool called Mesh Fit. And the mesh fit it has this bounded area where, which you're going to uh, decide how big you want that surface to be, how far you want to extend past the geometry that's there. And what this is going to do is just virtually drape a surface over that region for you. It's almost like virtually upholstering that area for me. So it's going to snap it, but it extends past that area. So that mesh fit is really nice. And again, if I want to take these two and trim them together. I can do so where I just come over to 
surface trim, select these two, the only those two, and just if I toggle that target on off, that's a little trick there, it will automatically populate those. So now I just trim those two surfaces together. If I just hide and show my other geometries that are in here, you'll see that there's those two surfaces trimmed together. So that is the first method um, for creating, uh, you know, prismatic geometry surfaces um, that are based on feature. So for the next one, we'll go ahead and turn that surface off and turn the mesh on. It's just like that image that I showed in the uh, PowerPoint earlier. The boundary fit surfaces are nice because you can just decide to sketch directly on the scan data. And from there, you can create uh, geometry that um, will fit within those boundaries and then also snap to the scan data as well. So if I come into 3D Mesh Sketch and I just select the spline, I can come in and just draw directly on the mesh. You see that? And then when I do that, I'm just going to make one surface patch just to save a little bit of time because I have a lot of ground to cover here. So there is the surface patch. So if I wanted to draw surface patches all over this part and just cover it, I can draw surface patches wherever I want them to be, get out of there and go over to Legacy Boundary Fit and select that sketch and you can even identify you know how much smoothing how accurate these surfaces have to fit to the mesh and what resolution they need to fit to the mesh um, so if you can tweak those all those blue dots are the are snapping to the mesh itself and you'll see if i turn that off that we just fit that directly on there so that's boundary fit so one big difference of boundary fit from the mesh fit right is the mesh fit like extends past the area where this is going to stay within those boundaries and then allow me to develop like a pretty elaborate network over top of the entire part. So for the next type is um, what we call exact surfacing. So the exact surfacing workflow is a carryover from the um, legacy geomagic days where we did an awful lot of uh, surface modeling. And in here, I'm not going to walk through the entire workflow because it's a manual workflow, but I'll show you a few of the steps and we'll go from there. Um, the way it works is it's kind of like a semi-automatic assisted workflow that's similar to a boundary fit. Um, what it's going to do is just walk you through extracting the high curvature areas and it will highlight those high curvature areas. It will allow you to then come in and paint more areas that you want the curves to be placed along those high curvature areas, and then it will fit them automatically. So if I just give it a second to extract, you'll see that it extracted a bunch of these regions. Now, if I wanted to like add, you know, more curves in there, I can add those in. And then when I get done, you'll see here that the software will automatically create those curves for me. And then you can cr construct a patch network that goes with inside. So um, with NURB surfaces, the way they're built is you have the 3D curves, you have the patches, you have the grids. And then inside of the grids, you have the, the nodes that make up those. Um, so every step of the, the way, you have the ability to adjust the boundaries of those curves the uh, resolution of the surfaces or how many patches it puts within the the uh, curves. So, so um, you know, walking through this entire workflow, you can actually, it's kind of like a semi-automatic method, right? Where you can influence where it's gonna draw those curves, but you're letting it fill in the rest for you. So that's what the exact surfacing method um, is like. That, brings me to the fourth method. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of that. The fourth method is essentially exact surfacing, but it's the easy button method, just like we talked about in the PowerPoint. So 
With this option, you have the ability to just tell it auto surface the entire part. And there's some options in here you can adjust for resolution. So how many surfaces you want it to wrap around there, how accurate you accurately you want them to follow the data. And then we even have a couple algorithms here. One of them is mechanical or organic. Um, so mechanical is going to be for a more prismatic shape. Organic is going to be for more of like a, an object like somebody's anatomy or something like that. So in this instance, I'm just going to go ahead and run it and let it go while I talk to it. So it does all those steps that we were showing in the exact surfacing workflow. It's just going to do them all at once and just output a surface for you. Now, I say surface. If it is a bounded scan data set, then that'll be a solid because it has no holes in it. If there are holes, then it will output a surface um, with respecting those holes that are there. Now, once you finish this, you can then use this auto surface as a body in the CAD environment. So if I want to Boolean this shape away from something else, or if I want to cut holes in it, you can do all those sorts of things. Um, so the auto surface method is, is extremely powerful when you don't want to spend the time reverse engineering. You just want to capture exactly what's there and utilize that for CAD modeling. So now that it is finished, I'll go ahead and hide the surfaces they're showing here. And then we will show what that body looks like here. All right, so now I will hide the scan data and then show here is my auto surface body that it finished. So just like we said, if I wanted to cut a hole through it, I'll just go over here, normal to draw a circle from the middle. And then we'll go ahead and get out of that and extrude it. So now go over to extrude solid. And change it to a cut. So now I just cut that. So this is the method uh, where you can use auto surface and then kind of do like a hybrid modeling workflow. Um, so that does it for today's session. I'll just toggle back over to my PowerPoint. Um, so additional resources. If you want to know anything about our products, 3dsystems.com. Um, if you need sales information, geomagic.sales.americas at 3dsystems.com. If you need to download trials, um, gettingstarted.geomagic.com. And we will have the recording available after this webinar for you to view. Thank you for your time.